I am resurrection and I am life, says the Lord. Whoever has faith in me shall have life, even in death. And everyone who has life and is committed to me in faith shall not die forever. As for me, I know that my Redeemer lives, and at the last he shall stand upon the earth. After my waking, he will raise me up. And in my body I shall see God. I myself shall see, and my eyes behold him who is my friend and not a stranger. For none of us has life in themselves, and none of us becomes our own master when we die. For if we have life, we are alive in the Lord. And if we die, we die in the Lord. So then, whenever we, wherever we live or die, we are the Lord's possession. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, who by the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, destroyed death and brought life and immortality to light, grant that your servant Phyllis, being raised with him, may know the strength of his presence and rejoice in his eternal glory, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. reading from the book of Ecclesiastes. There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones and a time to gather them, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to search and a time to give up, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to be silent and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. What do workers gain from their toil? I have seen the burden that God has laid on the human race. 
He has made everything beautiful in his time. He has set a, also set eternity in the human heart. No one can fathom what God has done from beginning to end. I know that there is nothing better for people than to be happy and to do good while they live. shepherd I shall not be in want he makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters he revives my soul and guides me along right pathways for his name's sake though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely your goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Readings from the letter of Romans in 1 John. Who is to condemn? It is Christ Jesus who died, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? No, in all of these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God and Christ Jesus our Lord. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it is not known him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will have has not been yet revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. The word of the Lord. Waking or sleeping, thy presence. 
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Jesus said, everything that the Father gives me will come to me, and anyone who comes to me I will never drive away. For I have come down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of who sent me. This is the will of him who sent me, that I should lose nothing of all that he has given me, but raise it up on the last day. This is indeed the will of my Father, that all who see the Son and believe in him may have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. The Gospel of the Lord. Uh, I'm Susan, uh, Phyllis's daughter. And I want to thank all of you for being here today. What a special day um, in remembrance of a beautiful woman. So bear with me as I get through this eulogy. Um, Phyllis Irene Myers was born on March 22, 1933 in Quincy, Illinois, to Mary Marshall and Charles Myers. Before she was three months old, her mother and father had parted ways leading her father to take Phyllis and her older brother Richard to St. Louis to live with their grandmother. Pastor Emily, um, would you be able to sign along with me? I'm sorry. <laughs> I just saw my cousin Rick is here, right here, and it would be lovely. You want, do you need to see my page or just hear me? <laughs> okay, thank you. I'm going to start over. <laughs> okay, Phyllis Irene Myers was born on March 22, 1933 in Quincy, Illinois, to Mary Marshall and Charles Myers. Before she was three months old, her mother and father had parted ways, leading her father to take Phyllis and her older brother, Richard, to St. Louis to live with their grandmother. In this home, money was always tight, but good manners, kindness, work ethic, patriotism, love, and strength of character were in abundance. Phyllis met Alan Powers at Cleveland High School. She always thought he was very handsome and remembered him having to constantly pull up his pants because he had no butt to keep them up. Their first date involved sneaking into a movie theater through the back door. It was cold out, but Al never put on his coat, keeping it over his arm. Later, she learned the coat had a major tear down the back. Phyllis was the speaker at her graduation from Cleveland High, and she thanked the parents in her speech, quoting, loving us, thank you for loving us, for guiding us, and most of all, for understanding us, and we hope we will prove the fine, successful parents you have honorably proved to be. Even as an 18-year-old, she was accurately predicting her own future. Alan and Phyllis were engaged on Christmas Eve, 1952. In June of 53, Phyllis received her Associate of Arts degree at Harris Teachers College. On November 14th of that same year, Phyllis and Alan were married. She described her marriage in this way. The joy was near to bursting for both of us, and it remained that way until his death. Together, they had four children, William, who died one day after he was born, Jim, Tom, and me, Susan. Mother proved that to be that fine, successful parent she was to my brothers and me, 
and instilled those skills in each of us. During Mother's 87 years, she lived in 22 different houses. She was a professional level mover, expert at wrapping, packing and unpacking, moving in and moving out, apartment, trailer and house, into a home over and over again. This did shape her life. She made new friends easily, but fiercely kept the old friends, even ones from kindergarten. She created beautiful garden after beautiful garden. She sewed curtains and slip covers, then packed up and moved again. Always with her sense of adventure, winning out over trepidation. After Al took early retirement from Kroger and they decided to buy a canoe livery in Steelville, Missouri, Mother became an equal business partner, using her talents and skills to help build Ray's Canoe Rental into a successful venture. After Dad's death in 1999, her 21 years as a widow were filled with ministry through Advent and Feed My People. She cooked meals and goodies for those in need. She grew vegetables and gave away hundreds of pounds of produce. She recycled and fiercely convinced you to do also. She invented ways to stay involved in her grandchildren's lives, knowing it mattered. Can't look at Joanna. <laughs> Knowing it mattered more than they could know. She never stopped exploring, trying new things, fighting with her iPhone, but thrilled with its offer of the world at her fingertips. She created community on La Yaffbury Lane by instigating Friday happy hours on her porch. This time in St. Louis was the longest she had ever lived in one place. The constant throughout this life was love. Love of God and his creation, love for her husband and family, love of community, a lifetime love of learning. Each of us here have experienced that love at times, delivered with her signature, opinionated, headstrong, backbone of steel brand of loving you. She was a force of nature that filled the world. On the morning of November 3rd, 2020, this life force collided with death. My world will never be the same. My compass, my strength, my greatest champion was gone. And for a while, I couldn't see past my pain, my own anger, and my loss. Until there it was, that voice in my head, loud and clear. Susan, you are strong. You are my daughter after all. And yes, I am. Mother taught me her definition of femininity a combo of beauty and strength that I strive toward. She taught me that faith is played out through your actions, that being a Christian involves stewardship of God's creation and serving others, that love lasts past death, that life is to be celebrated and that each day is a gift. To her church family here at Advent, I'd like to share an excerpt from a letter Mother wrote to Father Dan Hanchy as he was leaving for Points East. I'm quoting, may I say, I hope we here at Advent continue on the road to serving the community, to being open to our neighbors of all faiths. I hope we continue to lead Christ-filled lives. I am a child of God as you are, 
And so I say, he is risen, alleluia, all is well. As we remember Phyllis Irene Myers Powers, daughter, wife, mother, grandmother, great-grandmother, I hope your memories are filled with joyful laughter and love. I hope you will honor her memory through service, friendship, recycling, with each and every one of the days you are gifted. Dearest mother, all is well. Good job, Aunt Susan. You nailed it. <laughs> all right. Well, um, I'm not quite as prepared as she was. The words just wouldn't kind of come out onto the page, so. Um, <laughs> so, as you all know, um, my grandmother, Phyllis, was an incredible person. She taught us all many things and affected us all in many ways. And um, I was lucky enough to fit into her shoes. And um, first time I put them on to take my dog for a walk, I just had this moment where I felt like I was her for a minute. And I looked at our beautiful world and I was so thankful for the joy that she had instilled in me to love this earth. And there are many things that um, I could share about her, many that you heard from my Aunt Suze. She was an amazing friend. Just ask her neighbors. She was really great at making friends. Um, but the thing that I want to share is her love for the earth. Um, I've been reading this awesome book, and the whole way through it, I've been wishing that I could call her and share some of it with her. So I'm just going to share a little bit with you guys today. Um, she was so incredibly thankful for all that this earth pr provides for us. And, um, oh, the book is called Braiding Sweetgrass. Um, and in this book, there's this really great thankfulness prayer. I'm not going to read the whole thing because it's really long, but um, I'm going to read a couple parts. We are thankful to our mother, the earth, for she gives us everything that we need for life. She supports our feet as we walk about upon her. It gives us joy that she still continues to care for us just as she has from the beginning of time. To our mother, we send thanksgiving, love, and respect. Now we turn our thoughts to the creator, or great spirit, and send greetings and thanks for all of the gifts of creation. Everything we need to live a good life is here on Mother Earth. For all the love, that is still around us, we gather our minds together as one and send our choicest words of greetings and thanks, Creator. And I just want to finish with um, some words written by Grandma in a letter to all of us, uh, all of her family, um, on her 86th birthday. <coughs> I would like to say that I am very serious about caring for this planet. I hope my children and their children and their children's children will be good stewards to, to all of this earth, wait, stewards of this earth and carefully care. It is God's best gift to us. Every day that we enjoy it and marvel at its wonders and recognize its awesome beauty, 
and appreciate its delicate balance is a day that allows us to be more joyful, more understanding, more tolerant, more caring, and thus hopefully creating a better world on this small piece of earth on which each of us lives. So at this point, um, he'd like to invite anyone else that wants to share some way that Phyllis touched your life. So all are welcome. Good morning. My name is Judy Jacob, and I met Phyllis here at Advent. And as all of you, I'm sure you join me in saying, I remember Phyllis. We'll hear that several times through this morning. Phyllis and I met here at Advent, and we, I would say, bonded as we were working together to help prepare for one of the very early Advent antique appraisal teas. We agreed that before we had a crowd of ladies join us, that the bathrooms needed freshening up. So we painted them. She got out her purdy. I got out my purdy, and that same purdy still serves me well. I'm sure you found it, and I hope you continue to use it. Anyway, that grew into painting. I think over the course of the next year, thanks to the donations of a lot of parishioners who couldn't hold a paintbrush but wanted to participate in supplied paint, we painted everything but the parish hall, the new kitchen, and the nave. Probably the same paint job that you see today. From that, we started seeing each other more frequently. We even traveled to Florida a couple of times and joined Tom at a condo. Yes. And then Phyllis Pack, four other ladies, myself included, into her van one weekend. And we drove north. Where to? New Salem. We needed to explore and know our history in this great state of Illinois. So we explored all the replica and some original log cabins in New Salem, walked the whole thing, spent the night at a bed and breakfast in Petersburg, had a great time, especially drawing straws as to who shared a room with whom. On to Springfield, where we toured, of course, Lincoln's home, and various and sundry other things around the state capitol, and then drove home laughing and singing all the way. And yeah, Phyllis did sing occasionally other than at midnight in the bed. <laughs> then I remember Phyllis working diligently at many things here at Advent, primarily the garden. She tallied pounds and pounds and pounds of vegetables that were donated weekly throughout the growing season to feed my people. She was a gracious and lovely lady. She lived her faith. And I thank God I knew her.
as you're able, please stand with me. And in the assurance of eternal life given at baptism, let us proclaim our faith and say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Dear friends, it was our Lord Jesus himself who said, Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. Let us pray then for our sister Phyllis, that she may rest from her labors and enter into the light of God's eternal Sabbath rest. Receive, O Lord, your servant, for she returns to you. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend our sister Phyllis. Wash her in the holy font of everlasting life and clothe her in her heavenly wedding garments. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend our sister Phyllis. May she gaze upon you, Lord, face to face and taste the blessedness of perfect rest. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend our sister Phyllis. May she... Hear your words of invitation. Come, you blessed of my Father. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend our sister Phyllis. May she gaze upon you, Lord, face to face and taste the blessedness of perfect rest. May angels surround her and saints welcome her in peace. Lord Jesus Christ, we commend to you our sister Phyllis, who was reborn by water and in the Spirit in holy baptism. Grant that her death may recall to us your victory over death and be an occasion for us to renew our trust in your Father's love. Give us, we pray, the faith to follow where you have led the way and where you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit of the ages. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Share with one another a safe and distant sign of Christ's peace. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us. Sacrifice to God. Yeah. 
We at Advent believe this is our Lord's table. And we invite all baptized Christians to join us in communion. In a moment, when we celebrate, let's, let's have two sides. Deb will take her place on this side. I'll be over here to distribute, to distribute the bread. And as you wish, come uh, and let's make a, a kind of a motion like this and return to your seats as you move. You may see the little squares that are up here for the, for the uh, distribution stations. How about that? Please stand with me as you're able. Let's, let's pray together the great thanksgiving that begins on page 5. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Jesus Christ, our Lord, who rose victorious from the dead and comforts us with the blessed hope of everlasting life. For to your faithful people, O Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when our mortal body lies in death, there is prepared for us a dwelling place eternal in the heavens. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and our angels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name holy 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 lord god of power and might heaven and earth are full of your glory hosanna in the highest blessed is he who comes in the name of the lord hosanna in the highest we give thanks to you O god for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil, made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all. Presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. And in the fullness of time, Put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with Phyllis and all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of the nation, the head of the church, 
and the author of our salvation. By Him and with Him and in Him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. And Hallelujah. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Of God for the people of God.
Please stand with me as you're able. Let's pray together the post-communion prayer that starts on the bottom of page 7. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, You have graciously accepted us as living members of Your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And You have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of His body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please have a seat. The focus of our service now shifts. It shifts from the table to the burial place. Continuing on page 8 with the words of the committal. Everyone the Father gives to me will come to me. I will never turn away anyone who believes from the dead will also give new life to our mortal bodies through his indwelling spirit. My heart therefore is glad and my spirit rejoices. My body also shall rest in hope. You will show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. And in your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Jesus. We commend to Almighty God our sister Phyllis, and we commit her body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to The Lord bless her and keep her. The Lord make his face to shine upon her and be gracious to her. The Lord lift up his countenance upon her and give her peace. Amen. with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Rest eternal grant to her, O Lord. May her soul and the souls of all the departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen.
Alleluia, Christ is risen. Let us go forth. Please have a seat, folks, if you could, for just a moment.